You've most likely seen it before. Beautiful images of firelight playing off an object or an actor's face in your favorite film. It's an undoubtedly gorgeous effect and one that typically requires a little more than simply lighting a fire. If you've ever tried to capture this effect, you likely have noticed that it doesn't quite look the same as it does in the movies. So how are cinematographers creating such captivating images if not by simply photographing a fire? I'm Eric the Cameraman and today I'm going to teach you the secrets of achieving this look. For this video, while I'm going to try to keep it light on terminology and technicality, there are two basic lighting concepts that you need to understand, those being practical lighting and motivated lighting. Now if you follow my channel, you more than likely have heard these terms before, but now you'll get to see them in practice. First is practical lighting. Practical lights are essentially any lights that are placed in the shot as sources of light. This could be anything from a lamp to street lights to the fireplace, you name it. So if we see it in the shot, it's a practical light. We use these in a variety of ways, sometimes lighting a scene purely with them. However, more often than not, these lights either don't produce the right quality or quantity, giving muddy images that lack depth and nuance. And this is where a second concept comes in, motivated lighting. Motivated lights are lights that are used to mimic the look of practicals, giving the impression that the practicals are lighting the scenes while adding much needed brighter outputs and a higher quality that comes from film lights. They'll be placed outside of the frame, but at roughly the same angle as the practicals to give the illusion that they are actually creating the light that you see in the image. So now that we understand these concepts, the way we'll be creating our look is through the use of motivated lights. I'm going to take you through four basic scenarios, starting from the most basic to the most sophisticated, and when you might want to use each of them. So make sure you stick through the end of this video to get the most out of each technique. So for our first technique, we're simply going to be placing a motivated light just off of camera as a constant source. While it's a bit unsophisticated, this will at least allow for the image to have a more aesthetically pleasing look than if you simply try to expose the camera to the firelight itself. Now if, like myself, you're a fan of classic films, you have undoubtedly seen this technique on display. Now while it looks great for older films, cinematography has evolved quite a bit, and this technique lacks the variability that comes from firelight. Watch a flame for any amount of time, and you'll see it flicker, varying in intensity, and producing inconsistent light source. So to get the best looking shot possible, we're going to have to do more than this. But how can we use this technique? Well, if you're filming something in the style of classic cinema, then this is the technique you will want to use. If you take a more modern approach to your shot composition, something that is meant to resemble older films, you'll end up with something that looks modern but with just a black and white filter slapped on it. This technique also works very well for photography, so if the image is still, then the light flickering would be indiscernible. The next technique we'll use is a practical light that has a flickering function. A lot of LED lights have features like these built in, which make it really easy to get the look you want. I'm using newer 660s, which have a multitude of looks like candlelight already built in, which it's pretty nice. However, relying on these features does have its drawbacks, one of which is that it loops, so it creates a defined pattern, which you will absolutely pick up on, and you would then have to try and mask over through some clever editing. Even though you're now getting the variability needed to make a convincing flicker in your light, you're now missing the unpredictable element that comes with real flame. So when could you use this? Well, if you're working with multiple cameras and you have several cuts in the edit, you could disguise the shortcomings of this technique. You could also use this when you're filming alone, as the next two techniques will require someone to operate. The next technique is to have someone operate the light with a dimmer switch. Instead of using a looped pre-programmed look in an LED light, you could address the problem of predictability by having someone manually flicker the light. Whether you're using Fresnels with an additional dimmer switch attached or simply a dimmable LED panel, this technique can be applied to virtually any sort of film light. So when could you use this? Well, in most scenarios it probably will work fairly well if you have enough crew to dedicate someone to operating a light while filming. Now, However, as good as this technique is, there is one slight drawback. Firelight doesn't simply dim and brighten, but it moves and grows and changes constantly. Whereas our motivated light, while successfully dimming at random, is fixed in one spot. 
So this brings us to the number one technique that you can use to achieve this look, which is by turning the motivated light and reflecting it back onto the subject with a moving source. So for those of you familiar with photography, you'll recognize this five in one reflector I'm using. Though instead of using this to fill in shadows from sunlight, I'm gonna utilize it here. With our motivated light hitting its gold side, I'm going to manipulate the light by moving the reflector randomly throughout filming, which can replicate the look of firelight incredibly well. The only drawback of this technique is, like the former, you will need the assistance of someone to operate during filming. But as far as the look it produces, it is unmatched. Give these techniques a try and see what works for you. Well, thank you as always for watching and if you I bid you all a very fond farewell. I suppose you think that was Janet McClellan.